one of the four practices of strategic narrative is visionary leadership. I say that it's a practice because it's something that you can learn, that you can grow. There is process, there are, there are tasks, there are things you can implement to actually grow your vision, develop it, um, really shape it, and then learn to share it with others and actually turn it into reality, which is the, the goal of visionary leadership. And you may be intimidated by the words visionary leadership because we hear, you know, it's a common narrative, it's a common assumption that there are people who have a vision and, and people who don't. And I think, it's a, I think it's a myth. I think it's possible, it's accessible to everyone to do the work of creating um, a better understanding that they can share about the future, about something that they'd like to change and transform. So... How do you get over the perfectionism, the the idea that, yes, you have to have a vision now and it has to be great, it has to be perfect. Otherwise, you won't be credible. You won't be trusted maybe by your peers or your team or even yourself. Well, I would say start small and start to look at the past because um, there is nowhere or nothing to look at in the future, you, we don't know. It's it's super it's super um, un uncertain. I mean, have, have you, haven't you noticed that around us the, the future is really unpredictable? Things are very very unpredictable. But what you can look at is the past, what has happened to you in your experience, what has happened to others in their experience, and you can draw conclusions from that past. You can learn lessons. You can learn at experiences, moments, situation where. You wish that things may have turned differently. And, and, and that's, really, that's really how you start developing a new vision, a new frame, a new understanding for what, what uh, the opportunity that you might be after if you listen to all great transformative and disruptive company founders. They will tell you that they almost remember the exact moment where, in, where their, their uh, vision started to form in their mind. And typically... It is at a moment where they struggle with something or they had an epiphany or they had an opportunity that nobody else but themselves saw that everybody ignored. Um, some examples I've, I've, I've used in the past are, for instance, the president of Volvo in the 1950s who um, lost someone, a relative, in a car accident and um, came to realize that he could not accept to produce unsafe cars uh, when he knew that there would be methods, there would be a way to make cars uh, much more safe. And so that's how, that's the, that's the root, that's the DNA for Volvo's new positioning uh, in the car manufacturer's market around safety. And so that's, that's how he shaped a vision for the company at the time. That's how he formulated the wish, the hope, and the new purpose for the company. It's because of personal experience. But it might be personal experience. It might be personal observation. It might be through your conversations with your, with your, uh, with your network, with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. It's there. It's up to you to listen. It's up to you to slow down. It's up to you to document. It's up to you to look at the journey that you've been on and start making sense of it. This is the first step to visionary leadership. It's about exploring what you see that could happen differently and shaping really um, an exciting uh, hope, an exciting future, an exciting opportunity yeah i mean um, maybe it's a cause maybe we can even call it a cause we can even we could we can call it even a big mission for what could come in the future so again when approaching visionary leadership don't forget that visions were never built in one day it's a process it's a growth process it's something that takes effort attention that takes time and so you need to start it today all right, I hope this helps.